Good morning to one and all. As a part of e-learning program, today we are going to discuss about zinc phosphate cement. Coming to the introduction, zinc phosphate cement first appeared in the literature in 1879. The other names of your zinc phosphate cement mainly are crown and bridge cement and zinc oxyphosphate cement. Dr. Otto Hohmann first invented zinc phosphate cement in 1800s. It is the oldest looting cement and its clinical record of success serves as a standard against which when many New Year cements are compared nowadays. The commercially available names of your zinc phosphate cement in the market are Confit, Harvard, Zincsem and Modern Tenacin. The composition of your zinc phosphate cement mainly consists of powder and liquid. Powder consists of zinc oxide that is a major ingredient that is 90% of your uh, zinc oxide will be present and magnesium oxide of about 8.2% and other oxides of 1.6%, bismuth trioxide of 0.2% and silica of 1.4% will be in the powder components. Whereas the liquid, it mainly consists of phosphoric acid of about 38.2%, it was the main acid in the liquid and contains water of about 36%, alumina and zinc phosphate of about 16.2% and aluminium of 2.5%, zinc 7.1%. The mainly the mode of supplies was zinc phosphate is commercially available as powder and liquid form and sometimes it can be available as precapsulated form also. Coming to the manufacturing, the ingredients are preheated together at a temperature of 1000 to 1400 degrees centigrade and this process is called as sintering. After the sintering is completed, the entire mix will be cooled quickly and due to this cooling of quickness, this will cause the material to crack which will help in grinding the material into a fine powder and entire this process is called as fritting. As you already know about the, there exist different types of classifications in the cement. The zinc phosphate is mainly classified according to the ADA specification number 8 that is type 1 as a fine grain powder which will be used as an uh, your looting agent whereas in case of your type 2 which is a medium grain powder mainly used as your thermal insulating base and intermediate restrictive material. Setting reaction, it is mainly an acid based reaction and heat is liberated during this setting reaction, hence it is known as your exothermic reaction. When the liquid that is your phosphoric acid is mixed with your zinc oxide powder, phosphoric acid liquid will attack the powder that is your zinc oxide and leads to the formation of zinc aluminum phosphate gel, water and heat is liberated. This was the schematic diagram representing your uh, setting reaction, mainly when powder and liquid was mixed leads to the liberation of zinc free ions and this zinc free ions along with your aluminium and phosphate ions reacts and forms zinc, zinc aluminium phosphate gel and in this process your heat will be liberated hence this reaction is called as your exothermic reaction. Mainly to dissipate this heat you have to mix your zinc phosphate in a cool glass slab and you have to mix your zinc phosphate in a wider area and also in increments so that this heat will be dissipated. This represents the schematic diagram of your set cement. The mainly the set cement consists of unreacted zinc oxide particles in the center around which zinc aluminum phosphate matrix will be surrounded. Manipulation Mainly in the manipulation, the powder liquid ratio plays a crucial role in zinc phosphate manipulation. This indicates whether go you are going for your looting consistency or base consistency depends mainly on powder and liquid content. You will have a more powder and liquid content in case of your looting whereas you will have a more powder in case of your base consistency. The powder liquid ratio is of about 1.4 grams to 0.5 ml of your liquid content. The mainly the mixing time was 1 minute and 15 seconds and setting time is 5 to 9 minutes. The cement is mainly mixed in a cool glass lab that is mainly it's a, as it is an exothermic reaction to dissipate the heat you have to use a cool glass lab with the help of a narrow bladed stainless steel spatula. The first diagram mainly represents a it shows the entire 
manipulation of your zinc phosphate first the powder will be dispensed and then the powder will be divided into increments of about 6 increments of different sizes mainly the sizes of 1 by 16, 1 by 16, 1 by 8, 1 by 4, 1 by 4 and 1 by 4 and the liquid was dispensed after the powder was divided into increments. Mainly this is very important because the liquid should not be dispensed onto the slab until the powder is divided into increments. Mainly because the whatever the water content present in the liquid will get evaporated if it is dispensed priorly. This leads to increase of the viscosity of the phosphoric acid gel making the manipulation difficult and slowly in the B diagram if you have a look the first part was slowly added to the liquid and mixed over a larger area for 5 10 seconds mainly this was mixed in a larger area because to dissipate the heat and then the next increment was added simultaneously and mixed until you get a proper consistency. So the C diagram represents mainly the looting consistency which can be used using a spring test whereas the D represents the base consistency of your zinc phosphate. Preferably the mix cement should be mixed on a frozen slab technique which generally extends the working time and allows incorporation of more powder into the liquid but this method has a disadvantages mainly because incorporation of water into the mix which will alter the properties of the cement. During setting water contamination should be avoided because on moisture contamination phosphoric acid mainly leaches out of the cement and leads to solubility of the cement will be increased. Mainly there exist two types of consistency of your zinc phosphate that is mainly your base consistency and looting consistency. The looting consistency will have lower powder liquid ratio that is mixes will be a little bit fluid which will be springs up from the slab around 2 to 3 centimeters as the spatula is lifted from the freshly mixed cement. This is called a spring test and base consistency it will have a higher powder liquid ratio and it will be more like a heavy putty content. There are different factors which will be affecting the working time of your zinc phosphate. Mainly the four techniques will extend the working time of your zinc phosphate cement. The first one will was your powder liquid ratio. Powder liquid ratio can be reduced to produce a thinner mix means the lower powder liquid ratio leads to the looting consistency. This change result in lower initial pH and it will adversely affect the properties of the cement. And next one was your mixing smaller portion of the powder in the few first increments. By this initially if you add a smaller increments of powder will be dissolving into the liquid which will reduce the acidity of the phosphoric acid and retax the reaction rate. Meanwhile whatever the heat was generated will be dissipated. And the third one was the prolonged spatulation. This is mainly under the control of the operator. Operator, operator can prolong the spatulation of the last increment of the powder but this is not a preferred method for ex extending the working time. Next one was your colder mixing temperature. This will retard the chemical reaction between the powder and the liquid thereby delaying the formation of the matrix itself. The mainly the retention of your zinc phosphate cement is mechanical. It does not chemically bond to the tooth structure. Coming to the properties, compressive strength. Mainly the compressive strength of this zinc phosphate is high. This leads to the usage of your zinc phosphate as a base under the amalgam restriction because it has to withstand the high condensation forces of your amalgam. The cement generally has a high compressive strength of about 104 megapascals in 24 hours time. Maximum mainly 70% of the strength will be gained in first 30 minutes and full strength will be attained after 24 hours. Next was your tensile strength. It is about 5.5 megapascals. So when compared to the tensile strength, Com compressive strength, tensile strength was very much less. So, you can't use this cements where the tension was applied. So, it is weaker in tension thus making it more brittle cement. Modulus of elasticity, okay? it has high comparatively high modulus of elasticity of about 13.5 gigapascals. It makes the material stiff and resistant to elastic deformation. Thus, it is beneficial when you used under a stress areas like mainly where the, they are subjected to high masticatory forces. 
thermal pro properties it is a good thermal insulator and effective in reducing the galvanic effects adhesion mainly is because of your mechanical adhesion it does not chemically bind to the tooth structure biological properties mainly the ph of the set cement is high at the time of insertion due to the phosphoric acid at the time of insertion the ph is 2 but the end of 24 hours it reaches up to 5.5 making the pulpal response little bit moderate optically the set cement is opaque the main advantages of your zinc phosphate cement is it has very much high compressive strength it is a good thermal and electrical insulator and relatively less solubility the disadvantages the tensile strength is very much less so it makes very much brittle in nature high modulus of elasticity making it more stiffer lack of flexibility lacks chemical adhesion and it's pulpally irritant and it does not have anti cariogenic property uses mainly the applications of zinc phosphate cement is looting of restorations like your inlays crowns and fixed dental processes it is used as an thermal insulator high strength base temporary restorations and mainly for looting of orthodontic brands and brackets coming to the conclusion a solid background in these basic principles will greatly facilitate the clinician in selection and handling the materials which will ultimately lead to the success of the restorative procedure which we are going to perform thank you